welcome back and today I'm going to be looking at how to design um, well very briefly really a DC servo like we've done before uh, instead of using the LabVIEW kit the my reel I'm going to be using this um, ESP32 32-bit micro uh, which is programmable, programmable in um, either the Arduino environment or in ordinary C or it can be uh, programmed using Python even I'm using the Arduino environment and uh, I've got a motor here um, with um, quad detector on the back and quad detector here and um, basically the um, as I move this it should move the servo when I designed it it's actually done there I've got a H bridge uh, which handles 30 amps. It doesn't need to handle 30 amps of course for this motor but uh, it's handy to have a one that's a little bit over engineered when you're experimenting because when it goes into oscillation when you're setting it up um, you, you can blow your H bridge quite easily really so this one um, this one's okay or any, anything similar to that uh, and the 12 volt power supply one that's uh, variable adjusted to 12 volts and I need a scope for something as well. This uh, Quad encoder, rotary encoder, is um, 360 uh, pulses per rev, uh, per rev, and it um, runs off 5 volts, just like this one runs off 5 volts as well. Uh, so, if a quick look at the um, what we've got, this is the motor here. You can buy them for about 21 New Zealand dollars from AliExpress. Um, they come in different uh, speeds and gearbox sizes and so on. Uh, these are pretty powerful motors. And these motors, uh, I've seen one without the encoder being used in children's ride-on cars with a great big gearbox. Uh, I pulled it apart and found that motor and that's one of the reasons why I want to use that because I've got a big system up here which is controls to uh, three degrees of freedom and uh, you know, this rotates like that and the platform rotates and they've got these, they've got these uh, motors that we installed in there and so uh, and there's another um, uh, project which I'm using the my reel for that I'm going to use the ESP32 it's been around now for a year or two what I gather it's very cheap from AliExpress at least it's about five New Zealand dollars three or four US dollars um, and uh, the only problem I had was uh, I did keep getting an error when I compiled the program and I discovered that you need to put a capacitor uh, between the enable pin and ground an electrolytic 10 microfarad dish um, with a polarity right negative going to ground uh, that solves that problem uh, the other problem is I was using pin 2 I think it was um, maybe that one uh, and um, that interferes with the flash when you're flashing to memory so um, I, went, I didn't use pin 2 and then everything sprung to life there's my um, H bridge which you can get for $16 now pretty cheap um, but you'll get cheaper ones but this is dual channel again we don't need dual, dual channel but really um, so say if you're experimenting you want to one that handles a bit of current really so our first sketch as they call it on the other than a program, a bit of code is here, which uh, would take a long time to go through, uh, really. Uh, but it's a standard PID. The the um, I'm using this code off the internet for uh, the encoders. I'm not using um, interrupts. It's basically just looking at the logic outputs, and if um, you know one is not equal to the other, then the counter is incremented or it's decremented depending on um, the state of things. You do the same with the other one, so you've got two of those. Um, the PID bit, well, there's the, there are the gains. Um, oh, there. there are the gains. KP, proportional derivative and integral. So this is going to run initially um, just um, in its raw format. There's going to be no timing in the loop. It's just going to run around um, forever and uh, the thing is I want to be able to measure the the speed that it runs when it's operating and to do that um, 
all I've done is really put in a, a, a Boolean output which uh, it gets complemented here. It's called running the Boolean thing and running equals not running every single time. So if it was logic level 1 it goes to logic level 0 and that gets sent out, it doesn't matter which order you do that, to the uh, a digital out and uh, you end up with a square wave coming out which you can measure. Uh, so you've got to be careful the frequency of that square wave is not the is not the frequency of the the loop if you like it's um, it's uh, half of that frequency which I'll come to in a minute but let's compile it and you'll see how quick it is and this very fast there shouldn't be any errors at all Fourteen percent, twenty-eight percent, seventy percent, eighty-five, hundred percent. That's it. You might be able to hear a little humming noise. That's because there's no filter on the derivative action, and there it is. It output following the input, and it's pretty uh, tough actually. There's a lot of torque there. There's so much so I've had to anchor the motor with this great big bit of steel here. The bit of steel is to stop it tipping over and it will jump off the table if you don't do that. Uh, so I, can, I mean I can turn around many tons. This is a 360 degree, you know, multiple ton servo which never existed really before the digital world came about. When I reset it, it goes back to its starting position. Good that, isn't it? There's a button here I've got which I... Just a switch which just resets the counter, that's all. So when these things get switched on you need a a zero position for it to park otherwise when you switch it on again it doesn't know where the center point is uh, so if you, if you switched it on when this was over here for example that would be its zero point so uh, you've got to watch that but you don't have that problem with analog servos but of course you do here anyway so here's that logic output I mentioned and uh, it's a square wave that comes out and you need to you see it's reading 11.25 kilohertz frequency but that is not the frequency of the loop that it's running at because frequency is measured by the um, reciprocal of the period which is there but actually I'm only interested in half the period which is twice the frequency so my set my frequency is actually 22.5 kilohertz which is really fast it's quite amazing really uh, so that loop is 22 0.5 kilohertz sampling rate. Now if I um, now go and zoom out now, if I now and go and investigate how to um, do a timed loop, it's not too difficult to figure out, you can find this, oh that's not really, yes it is, that's the code, it's very small but this is just to sort of show you how it's done. Um, you need um, to use the micros um, command there and uh, in the Arduino language it's defined the time interval as 100 microseconds um, which is 10 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz and we have pin 21 which is the, our flag that we, I mentioned before which is going out going off and on to measure the frequency of this um, to call it, I call it the sampling pin but call it anything you like and you define a boolean which is called running um, and then you go through there's your setup here there's not much to set up and then the main loop uh, if current uh, you, you first of all you you do um, if um, unsigned long unsigned long current time is equal to micros that tells you the current time and uh, microseconds and then uh, if the current time minus the previous time is greater than the time interval you do something which in this case is just um, complement, uh, you take the, the complement of the um, whatever the value was, if it's true it becomes false, if it's false it becomes true and you send it out to the digital output. So this is set up for 10 kilohertz so we should get 10 kilohertz but of course we don't get 10 kilohertz here we only get half that because remember the period is, is half of what we're measuring so um, oh, and it's 11.25, so that means we've not compiled it. 
So let's compile it and then uh, it should work. So I'll compile it, which should be pretty fast. There it is compiling 14%, 28%. And we're done. So now have a look and you'll see it. it's giving me 4.7 kilohertz. That's close to 5 kilohertz. If you double it, it's 10 kilohertz. But so the actual sampling frequency or the frequency that's running at is 9.6 kilohertz. Okay. Which is not spot on, agreed. Nevertheless, you can see how it's done. So we can now go back and um, do the whole thing again the, with the servo uh, with um, there it is there test and I've also put in a digital filter on the derivative action so I can do that now but I have to design it I'm not going to go into the detail because that would take I might do that another time actually to go into the theory because you need Z transforms and difference equations and whatever but so now I've, I'm going to compile it a second time this one a different one rather so this is um, with the sampling at 10 kilohertz or 9.6 kilohertz as the case may be. And uh, it's got a digital filter, a first order low pass filter on the, um, uh, on the derivative action. So it's pretty cool now. It's, it's quite strong as well actually. And again I can go around as many times as I like and I hit my button, it's just a switch. And it goes back to where I was. Uh, so that's the old fashioned type servo where you can just go plus or minus a small amount. Uh, it's very responsive. I think you'll see, of course, you can do this with a big motor if you want to, any size of motor you like. Uh, you just have to tune it in a bit differently. Um, and that's kind of it. That's how to uh, do it. But uh, beware when you're programming, uh, when you're um, using this the, to put a capacitor between the enable pin and ground otherwise you get these um, errors coming up that's just a problem with the board that I've discovered that other people have discovered it rather and don't use pin 2 because that's also um, conflicts with the uh, flashing the, uh, the the flash memory you can um, read this book if you want to which is more on digital filters my book on feedback by Tom Moyer by Springer thank you very much indeed for watching I'll maybe be back with another one on digital filters at some point <laughs>